So what is a robot? You may have seen on TV or in a movie like Wally or the Jetsons, Iron Giant, BB-8 from Star Wars, Baymax from Big Hero 6, the Transformers, R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. There's so many robots in movies and TV. And in all those places, those robots can walk, they can talk, and many of them have feelings. But you know what? Real robots are not that advanced and they're not that cute. So here are some real robots doing jobs they were designed for. Here are car building robots and apple picking robots and robots that put books on shelves at libraries and robots that deliver packages around an Amazon warehouse. They're all designed to do one specific job and do it just right. Here's Cosero. He's a robot that someone's trying to design to do more sophisticated jobs, but you can see that he's still learning. So this robot's job is to open up a bottle of milk and then pour it into the bowl. And the person who designed him and wrote his computer program has tried very hard to get him to do this job. So he scoots up closer to the, to the table, looked at the bowl, gets a little bit lower, the computer program is designing it just right to get them all lined up so that the milk is going to go into the bowl like they want it to. Now it took his engineer a lot of work to design this. Let's see if he got it right and if the milk will go in the bowl. Will it work? It did. So that robot has successfully poured milk into a bowl. And that's really impressive for a robot and really great that he could do it. But you know what, that'd be super easy for a human being, right? We're still learning how to design robots that are more skilled than we are as humans. So what is a robot? First, one of the key ideas are that robots are machines that humans build to do something. Okay, robots are not alive and they don't just kind of come into existence somewhere. They have to be built by a human being who designed them and built them, or usually a group of human beings who designed and built them. So a true robot can do three things. They can sense information about their environment, think about that information, and then take an action. So they have sensors and a processor to think with and actuators, which are tools to do a job with. Someone designed a robot backpack and its job is to be able to put all your lunch stuff into and then you go for a walk and your robot backpack would follow you. Let's see it in action. So as he walks, the backpack just follows him everywhere he goes. And that's that robot's job. And that robot is so good at the job, you can even go down and around a corner and turn a corner. And indoors, it can avoid obstacles go around the corner, find its owner, and after he takes his things away, he can tell it to go park. So again, the robot has three different things. One thing it has is sensors. So robot sensors act like our sensors. So I can see with my eyes, a robot can see with light sensors. I can feel with my hands, and a robot has touch sensors that notice pressure or temperature. I smell with my nose and hear with my ears, Robots have sensors that help them hear and smell and do all of those other things if they need to, to do their job. Not all of them need all of those senses to do their job. Robots also have processors. Those are computers that help them to think. So the sensors take in information and then the computer processes the information and decides what to do. That's a lot like when our brains think about what we learn from our senses. So we might see something or hear something and then our brains help us process or think through what to do about that thing. So with computer, our robot, the computer tells the robot how to respond. So this robot vacuum cleaner, its job is to keep going straight and vacuuming and keep going straight and vacuuming and keep going straight and vacuuming until it runs into a wall and then it needs to turn around. Or if it's about to fall down the stairs, it needs to turn around so it doesn't get damaged. Let's watch a robot vacuum do its job. It goes forward, forward, forward. Oops, hit a wall. Got to turn. Oops, hit a wall. Vacuum, 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 vacuum. Uh oh, it's another wall. So it turns and goes straight ahead until it feels a corner. It goes around the corner and uh oh, 
those are the stairs. So it turns so it doesn't fall down the stairs. Oh, got to turn again. And then it goes straight ahead vacuuming until it hits the wall. So robots have sensors to notice things with. They have computers to process and think about things with. They also have to have an actuator. They have to do something. Some of them might light up or make noises. Some of them might move around. This one solves a Rubik's Cube puzzle. And the first thing you do to solve a Rubik's Cube puzzle is you have to look at it to see where all the different colors are. So the camera looks at it and it turns and looks and turns and looks. It moves this camera out of the way so it can flip it and it does some more looking. And once it's looked at it all, then it's going to start solving it. So it turns it, flip it, turn it, flip it, turn it, flip it, until all of the colors line up and the Rubik's Cube is solved. And there we go. It's all done. So robots also need a source of energy. So some of them plug into electricity or you charge up their battery. Um, some of them have batteries you put inside of them. Some have gas engines like a car. Some robots are solar powered, like this gardening robot that gets its energy from the sun. So why do humans build robots, right? Because all robots were built by a human. So why do we do that? We invent robots to do jobs that humans can't do or humans don't want to do. So we build robots that do boring jobs like cleaning a swimming pool. We also build robots to do jobs that would be dangerous for humans to do, like fight fire, or clean windows on very tall buildings, or robots that explore the planet Mars. So when an engineer wants to design a robot, they first have to decide what job they want it to do. And that helps them decide what types of sensors it needs to have. So what does it need to see or hear? What kind of actuator tools to include? They have to decide what material to make it out of. Like if you want something for Mars, that needs to be different than something you build to clean your swimming pool. Um, and they also have to think about what shape to make it. So one thing you could think about is you could think, hmm, if I wanted to build a robot nurse that would take care of people who are sick, what would it be like? And the person who designed this robot thought, hmm, it would need to be soft, so it's nice to be touched by. It would need to be strong, so it could pick somebody up and carry them if they couldn't walk. Um, it would need to be gentle, because we need to be gentle with someone who's sick. And it needs to look friendly, because when you're sick, you want to see a friendly face. So. If you were trying to think about what to build or how to build it, often inventors look at nature to come up with ideas for how they could design a robot that could do things that human beings can't do. So for example, scientists wanted to build a robot that could fight forest fires. And so to fight forest fires, it needed to be able to move across rough ground. It needed to not be damaged if tree branches fell on it. So they had the idea to model a robot on a pill bug or a roly poly bug because those were good at going over rough ground and don't get damaged when things fall on them because they roll up to stay safe. So the pill bot they designed would have six legs. A real bug has, pill bug has 14 legs, but the bot would have six legs and it would crawl across the forest floor faster than a human being could run. It would have heat sensors to help it find the fire, water tanks to put out the water fire with, and fire extinguishers too. And if that robot was in danger, it would roll up in a ball to protect itself. Now, the Pillbot robot is just an idea. Scientists haven't actually built it yet, but scientists have built lots of super cool robots. So I want you to think if you were gonna design a robot, the first thing you might wanna decide is does it need to move? And if it needs to move, then how would it move? Would it roll on wheels like a car or on treads like a tank? Or you could look to nature for ideas. Maybe your robot could creep like a spider Maybe it could crawl like a salamander, or maybe it would run like an ostrich. Maybe your robot would jump like a kangaroo, or maybe it would jump like a bush baby, or maybe it would jump really high like a sand flea. If your robot needed to go in the water, would it swim like a fish, or swim like a manta ray, or would it move like a jellyfish moves? What would your robot need to be able to do? Would you want your robot to be able to fly like a bat? Or climb up steep walls like a gecko can? Or climb trees like a python snake? Would you want your robot to act like a dog? 
or swing through the trees like a sloth, or hold on like octopus tentacles? Or would you build a robot that could dance? So what would you build? I want you to imagine if you were going to build a robot, what kind of a robot would you build? And here are some questions you could ask yourself. First, you want to think about what your goals are. So think of a job that you want your robot to do. Is there something that you can't do by yourself that you wish you could? Or is there something that you have to do that you don't want to do? Those might be good things to build a robot to do instead of you. You can think about senses. What kind of sensors does your robot need in order to do its job? Would it need to hear? Would it need to see? Would it need to know whether it's hot or cold or dark or light? So goals and sensors, those are your first two things. What about tools? What tools would it need to be able to, to do the job you want it to do? You can think about, are there any animals that can kind of do a job like that? Maybe I could take some ideas from something in nature. Is it gonna move? And how does it move? Is it going to have wheels or legs or wings or fins? Think about what habitat it needs to be working in. So is it something that's going to clean your room? Um, or is it something that you want to be able to go to the bottom of, of the ocean to find your treasure? That would tell you something about how you'd have to design it. Okay, so you have a choice of how you want to design your robot. You could just imagine it in your head and tell somebody about it. Or you could draw a picture of your robot design. Or you could write a story about it or you could build a model with some materials from the recycling bin and art supplies. So here are some examples of some drawings of robots that kids have created. And here are some models they made with things from the recycling bin and from their art supplies. So I want you to imagine if you were gonna build a robot what would its job be? What sensors would it need? What tools would it need? What would you build it out of to get a robot that would do exactly the job you wanted it to do? How will you build it? And what will you design?